my name is Leslie and today we're going to talk all about electrical circuits. Then I'm going to show you some super cool experiments. So we all know that electricity is super important to our lives, from charging our phones to turning on the lights. This is all made possible by electrical circuits. Remember that electricity is a form of energy that involves the flow of electrons. And this free movement of electrons is what we call an electrical current. So if you want to learn more about this, check out our previous video called Adventures with Electricity. But now let's take a closer look at electrical circuits. So what are circuits? A circuit is a pathway for the electrons to flow continuously. A circuit can be closed or it can be open, but only when it's closed is the flow of the current possible. When the circuit's open, there's a break somewhere in it and the flow isn't continuous. However, this is actually useful to us and we'll come back to this later. Now a simple circuit usually has four parts to it. The first one is a power source. So this is how we're gonna give power to the circuit, for example, with a battery. Number two is conductors. These make the path for the electricity to flow, connecting the power source to the load, for example, wires. Number three is the load, and this is usually a light or a buzzer that's turned on when the circuit is closed. And finally, we have a switch. This is to control when the circuit is open or closed. Remember when I said having an open circuit is also useful? This is so we can turn our circuit off at times. You don't want your light to be on forever. That would be a waste of electricity. Let's draw some circuits and see some examples. So how does this work? Let's start at looking at the power source. Batteries have a positive end and a negative end. This is so that the electrons have a direction to flow in. The electrons are negatively charged, so they're attractive to the positive charges. As such, the electrons will flow from the negative end of the battery through to the positive end. This electrical charge then flows through the conductors towards the light bulb and it powers it. The electric charges flow through the light bulb and continue through the wires all the way back to the battery. This is why we call it a circuit. The electricity will flow in a never-ending loop until we either flip the switch off and cause a break in the circuit, or the battery runs out of power. So here we saw a simple representation of circuits, but in real life, they're much more complicated. Our homes get power through something called an electrical grid, which is basically a very large network of connections from power generating plants to our homes, and it brings us electricity. Have you ever lost power in your house and noticed that the entire neighborhood also lost power? It's because you guys are all powered by the same electrical grid. Now another concept we should go over is the difference between conductors and insulators. In our circuits, the wires act as conductors and are able to transfer the electric charge. Conductors are basically any material that will allow electricity to flow through it. For example, metals such as gold, aluminum, or silver. Insulators, on the other hand, are used to stop the flow of electricity. They are made of materials that prevent the transfer of electrons. These protect us from electrical shocks, for example, wood or rubber. Both conductors and insulators are really important. Let's take your phone charger, for example. The inside of the phone charger has wires that conduct electricity so that your phone can be charged but the outside of the wire is covered in rubber so that it can stop the flow of electricity so when you touch it, you don't get shocked every time. So now let's play a little game. I'm gonna name a material and then I'll give you three seconds to guess if it's a conductor or an insulator. Ready? Number one, tin foil. Number two, diamonds. Number three, a toothpick. Number four, copper. Number five, water. This is actually a trick question. 100% pure water does not conduct electricity. However, tap water, rainwater, and most of the water we use does conduct electricity because it has other minerals in it, such as calcium and sodium ions. All right, good job, guys. It looks like you have a good handle on electrical circuits, conductors, and insulators. So let's do some experiments to see this in action. For our first 
this experiment, we're going to make our own circuits. So what you're going to need is a 9 volt battery, some strips of tin foil, a little LED light, or what I have here is just a Christmas light that I cut off. And then this is optional, but you can get a paper clip and a little thumbtack. Plus, I'm going to be using some tape just to make sure our tin foil doesn't move around. Okay, so let's build our circuit. So first with your tin foil, you're just going to fold it into little strips like this. And over here I just have a pile of pre-folded tin foil. Now, so we know for our circuit, the important parts are our light, our power source, and our switch. And then the tin foil is going to act as our conductors or wires. First we're going to start with our light and use our tin foil to connect it all the way until our battery. Somewhere in the circuit, you can create a small gap, which will act as a place for your switch. I'm just going to stick this thumbtack through the tin foil to keep the switch in place. So let's be careful with this because it's really sharp. And then we're going to put our switch right on top of that thumbtack. Alright, so our circuit's going to look something like that, so I'm just going to take some tape and tape it down. So that's our finished circuit. So when I take this 9 volt battery and close the circuit, what do we think will happen? Let's see. Nothing. So why did nothing happen? Let's start at one side of our circuit. So we go all the way through, and we see this. Our switch is open right now. That means we have an open circuit. So when the electrons come to this little gap, they can't flow across to the other side. So when we close the circuit, let's try it again. Our light turns on. Now you can continue to experiment with different circuits, with multiple lights, multiple switches, and even multiple power sources. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys something else really cool today. It's called the Makey Makey Machine. So this right here is the Makey Makey Machine itself. So the piano is our load, and the laptop is acting as our power source. And everything in between is connected by conductors, and I'm acting like a switch. So every time I come... Every time I touch a conductor, I'm closing the circuit, and we're going to be able to hear it. But if I touch something that doesn't conduct electricity, an insulator, it's not going to work. For example, a banana, a fork, even if I touch this cup of water, or another human. And then the light that we used from the other experiment also works. Thanks for listening. I hope you guys have a lot of fun making circuits at home. Thank you so much for watching Future Energy Systems video. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of our exciting content. Check out the links below to our website and learning page where you can find activities, learning extension, and more. You can also sign up on the website for notifications for future videos and interactive opportunities. There's so much to learn as we explore our energy future.